quickly, just going over the message flow and our time schedule. Um, at the Chenan conference, Pastor Yu mentioned this, and it's a reoccurring theme. Um, but everyone has a long standing problem. And as evangelists, we need to give the answer to that long standing problem. So if you want to save somebody in the field, if you want to save a region, or you want to change the flow of culture, you need to know and give the answer to what the long-standing problem is. Uh, the standard of that long-standing problem always, anything that we make a conclusion, it always goes back to the Word. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, 6, and 11. Okay, it's stuff that we've been hearing this entire year. So Genesis chapter 3, the strategy of Satan Long-standing to be self-centered, me-centered. Not God-centered, not word-centered, me-centered. Chapter 6, to be material-centered. Chapter 11, success-centered. This is the long-standing issue that everybody has. In the Western world, when you grow up in the States, that's what's taught to you. That's how you're educated. You're educated to be all that you can be. That's, that's, there's a lot, of, a lot of motives that focus on that. Just do it. Give your best. Find your dream. Um... What is your dream? Uh, whatever it is, you can do it. Get it. The only person that's stopping you is you. Um, there's a lot of motivational speakers, a lot of books, self-help books are at the bestseller list always because of this long-standing theme. This is in our culture. Um, it's the message that's within the media. And six, the six states. So, but this is the 12 problem. And this goes into the individual, each individual from a young age. That's what's scary about it. It's very unseen. And it seems beautiful, actually. The new age message, the age, the message of finding yourself, you can do it, uh, you know, um, find your true potential, unlock your secret potential. It's such a beautiful theme. But it's missing God. It's missing any thought of God. There's no room for God. Um, this is all given by Satan. That's the thing. This is what you see. But what's unseen is more important. What's unseen, what's invisible, is more important. Okay. And Satan takes all of this and he makes it imprints roots in nature from a young age. And we need to be careful with this, okay? Because Satan attacks the individual, makes it about the individual. And that's how we're imprinted in nature. If we're not careful, um, if we don't realize and acknowledge that, we will not see that too. And he makes it about me, and he makes it about my things. Okay, this is what was talked about. So we need to be aware and careful of that. A key passage where Jesus is addressing the Pharisees and addressing Christians of that day, Luke 15, the parable of the lost, the lost son. It's a very famous parable. Um, if you have a chance to uh, read the book written by Tim Keller called The Prodigal Son, or Prodigal God, he just it, the whole book's about this, this passage. But it's the three lost things, right? The sheep, the coin, and the son. And in Luke 15, the beginning of that passage, it, it's the Pharisees trying to test Jesus. You know, they're, they're trying to test him. And Jesus is giving this parable, <clears throat> directing the message of the parable to them. There's three things that, lost, uh, that are lost. Three things are found. Right? So there's a celebration. That's the common characteristic. Something's found. It was lost. There's a celebration. That's the point. It's a celebration. The sheep was lost. Hey, I found my lost sheep. Hey, come on, let's have a meal. I'm celebrating. I found the sheep. I found the coin. And finally, the son. It's a human being. My son is home. The fattened calf is slaughtered. The blood is shed and there's a celebration. And the celebration is so grand that you can hear it from outside. And the older brother hears it from outside, but he doesn't go in. That's the point of the message. That's the audience. Jesus is talking to that older brother, the Pharisee. You and me too. And he comes out to the older brother and says, come into the house. There's a festival. There's a party. There's a celebration. 
the friend, you know, the lamb has been killed. Come in, celebrate. And the brother is angry. He says, no, I won't. Why? Not because of, so the way that Satan imprints Christians too, there's good things and bad things. The older brother doesn't enter the house because of the good things that he's done. If you're not careful, your legalism, your religion, your righteousness, your own righteousness, your own good works will keep you from entering that banquet that God has prepared. The celebration, the joy of your salvation. And those Christians, a lot of Christians, and I'm guilty of that too, I'm guilty of that legalism too, have given so many people scars. That's why a lot of people receive scars and they leave the church because they feel judged. <laughs> because there's a lot of older brothers there, not in the joy of salvation, not in the assurance of salvation, but just sitting there. Not when an old, younger brother comes home, just sitting there like, yo, no, you can't be forgiven. Like there's just so much religion. Both are the same. Both have the same simple answer. Just come home. Come home and enter. The banquet has been prepared. The lamb has been killed. Come enter the gospel. So I bless you in Jesus' name that you change your imprints and roots. How do you change your imprints and roots? This Saturday's message flow. The hidden blessing that is inside of worship. If you know the hidden things that happen during worship, worship is different. It's different. What is worship? What is that about? The Word of God, the living Word of God is proclaimed. It's taking that living Word and bringing it into your prayer life. It's organizing the Word, making it yours, and doing this daily. Six days a week. So you take the Sunday message, what you got from Sunday. Don't leave it here on Sunday. Don't leave it in that notebook. That's why I try to, right after the message, I try to break the message down into simpler terms or a more organized way so I can hold on to it every day. If it's too much, it's hard to see. So this past week for me was, I need time to revive myself, was from the core. Okay, I need that time to receive strength, to receive healing. Abraham's restoration of the covenant. The second service. I just, I just write, write down a few terms. And by the end of the week, I just look at, I can look at it and I, I can get what God was trying to tell me. I can remind myself. But you've got to do it daily. <clears throat> and then our time schedule for EM, for us as staff, is taking this every single day, experiencing God's word in your life, God's message for you fulfilled every day of the week, so that you can be a witness of it. And that's what form is. Forum is an organizing message and just like being able to say, I oh, got point one and two. No, forum is, forum takes place as a wit as you're, when you're a witness. As you're experiencing it, it's very natural and easy to share. If you have good food, it's really easy to tell somebody about it because you've tasted it. And that's what a witness is, is someone who's tasted, who's seen. So let me just give you a, right before we go through this briefly, quickly, um, three today's, when you do the three todays, um, when you do your form after the EM service, just break it down into three three things, the three todays. The word, prayer, and evangelism. And what I mean by, let me go a little bit specific. And and do this like it shouldn't it shouldn't take more than three minutes. Form shouldn't be that long. It shouldn't take more than three. One minute should be the word what was fulfilled last week. So, you know, you should start the forum like, this is what I held on to last week and this is how it was answered. This is how I held on to it. I held on to the covenant of I need to, you know, the time to revive myself. And every morning and every night, I tried to take a few minutes and I did. And I could see how that changed my spiritual state. Very simple. That's less than a minute, right? And then you do a minute from last week and then your prayer topic should be the message from this week. But today, I heard this message, and this is what I'm holding on to, and this is how I'm going to practically apply the message. Application is very important too. A small application from the message today. So today, we have the book of Romans. 
So there's a lot of content there, but what from that content are you going to try to apply this week? What portion of it are you going to try to hold on to? That's what you share, just briefly. That's another minute. And last but not least, you have to share your evangelism part. Everyday evangelism. So um, if you have a list, it helps. A list of people that you're praying to share the evangelism with, uh, the gospel with. <coughs> At this time when you share, is you just share one person, not everyone. One person that this week and specifically you're praying to share the gospel with. And you share that form. And you, this should take more than no more than three minutes. Each person share with two or three people. After you share this forum, at the end, you as a staff and as a forum leader, you wrap it up in prayer. You start it off so they kind of understand how the format of forum should be. I mean, it doesn't have to be so rigid that it has to be one, two, or three. It doesn't have to be like that. But generally, this is the content that should be there. However order you want to do it. But generally it helps to have it organized too. It doesn't hurt. But specifically, right now, we should all be praying for the 23rd. Um, we're going to have turkey. We're going to have mashed potatoes. We're going to have gravy. We're going to have pumpkin pie. We're going to have good food. But all of that purpose is to share the gospel to people that, we can, <coughs> that might not have ever had a chance to hear the accurate gospel message. Maybe they got a, a good dose of religion, or maybe they've never heard the gospel, but it's such a great opportunity because it's Christmas. Non-believers don't get, they're not too scared, I mean, they're not as distant at Christmas time because it's just a part of the atmosphere, you know? So it's a great opportunity, so pray for the 23rd, okay? And all of this, when God, in His time schedule, gives us the answer to have personal evangelism take place in your life. When that happens, how are you going to nurture an individual? Not only nurture a newcomer, a new believer, how are you going to make them into a disciple like you? Is where we are now. So if you look at the handout, and we've talked about that. So when you say, when you hear that evangelism Bible study, how am I going to be an evangelist, or how am I going to raise or find prepared workers? It can be a, there can be a sense of burden, right? That's always part of, you know, the, the, the obstacle of experiencing evangelism is that first misunderstanding of, oh, how can I? I'm not ready. I need more training. I don't even know. <coughs> so that burden has to be let put down. Why? Because evangelism standard is not on you. It's not something that you do. It's something that's been prepared. It's something that God has prepared from the beginning of time. It's something that happens <coughs> naturally. Um, as you enjoy in Christ. Amen? So you should have no burden. <laughs> no burden at all. Okay? Let's look at, look at this uh, um, top paragraph. Let's read this together. Okay? What is evangelism? Matthew 16, 13 through 20. Ready to go? The evangelist must not be deceived and forget the reality or lose hold of the faith that God is with him. Evangelism begins when the evangelist experiences true happiness, knowing that God is walking with him, when he realizes that lost souls have no way to receive salvation except through the gospel, he has no choice but to see Matthew 28, 20 come alive in his every step. If this is true, then nothing is as easy as evangelism. Evangelism is not something you do, but something that happens. What And what kind of person does God use for evangelism? Number one, the worker whom God uses. So in the introduction, remember, if we can see that his gospel is the only answer, that the field needs only the gospel, and that God is with us, there's nothing easier than evangelism. It's just sharing God with you. Right? It's sharing that God is with you, and how that took place is through the gospel. Okay. So who is the worker whom God uses? Number one, the person who knows God's greatest concern. Acts 13, 48, 1 Corinthians 1, 21. Again, I really encourage you to look up these verses on your own. Um, the one thing that God sees as most important, urgent, and valuable is evangelism. This is because evangelism is God's work through us, and this is because it's actually His greatest concern. Matthew 24, 14 is not here, but the end is going to come when the gospel of the kingdom is preached to the ends of the earth. The world is turning, God is turning its world until His second coming for the sake of evangelism. Amen? Everything. Technology, airplanes are made for this sake. Airplanes are made for you and I. Airplanes are made for the evangelist. Amen? If I had to build a plane, it would be impossible. If I had to make it out of the, 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 
the metal, scrap metal, or put together a plane and then try to fuel it, it would be impossible. That's why God also blesses non-believers and huge airline companies so that evangelists can get on those planes, pay a small fee, and fly to a country to preach the gospel. Amen. So realize that, okay? Know that that's God's greatest concern. It's not just being prosperous or Bible study or knowing the Bible. That's not God's goal and desire. Greatest concern is evangelism. Number two, the worker is the one who knows that. Secondly, the person who accurately knows who Jesus is, Matthew 16, 13 through 16. He is the center point of history. God uses the one who sincerely knows that Jesus is a Christ and Messiah. And it's just briefly put here, but if you look at Matthew 13, 16, 13 through 20, you see that there's many different kinds of people following Jesus. You know this very well. All following Jesus for the wrong reason. They think some say he's like John the Baptist, some say like Elijah, Jeremiah, like one of the prophets. All of those are things that Jesus has done, but they're not why Jesus came. It's not who he is. He did heal. He held he healed people who were sick. Everyone that came to him he healed, he fed them, he did miraculous signs. But those signs itself are not the gospel. That's that's not why Jesus came, and that's not who Jesus is. He is a healer, but he is, the purpose he came is that he is the Christ. He came to solve man's unsolvable problem. The Lord Jesus, the worker who knows the name that was prophes prophesied thousands of years ago in the Old Testament, God looks for the workers who know who God, who, who God is, who Jesus is, and who he himself is. The person who accurately knows Jesus. Amen? He's the answer to the long-standing, unsolvable problem of Satan, sin, and hell. That's why he came. He came to finish this unsolvable problem. Amen? So whether you healed or not, that's not the point. But that's what a lot of people believe, and that's what a lot of people pray. When I go to Africa or India or any mission field, that's what they ask. They say, if, I'll believe in Jesus if I'm healed. I'll believe in Jesus if I, if I get pregnant. And have a baby. Can Jesus give you a baby? Can Jesus heal your sickness? Absolutely he can. But that's not the gospel. You don't need Jesus for that. Those same people pray to Vishnu and Krishna and right when you leave, they'll pray to their own gods. The healing itself is not important. This is. Amen? Jesus came. He's the Christ. means He's come to destroy the work of Satan. Okay. He's come to destroy this long-standing problem. Okay. He is the Christ. Thirdly, the person who knows not only who Christ is, but who has assurance and conviction of the blessing of salvation, who knows who they are. That's whom God uses. If you don't know who you are, if you don't know your assurance of salvation, you know Christ, you don't know um, the me that God has made, the things that God has given, then definitely you will not be able to find the field that God has prepared. Okay, 1 John 5, 11 through 13, this is the evidence that he who has the Son has life, he who does not have the Son does not have life. I write these things to you so that you may know it. Not just understand it, but know it, to experience it, to have assurance in that Jesus Christ is with you and in you. Amen? Assurance also means thanksgiving, having thanksgiving. Fourthly, the person who seeks after desperate souls. Acts 16, 14 through 15. God allowed Paul, uh, who was desperate to share the gospel to meet Lydia, who was desperate to receive it. God uses those who, who seeks after desperate souls. In other words, who seeks after the prepared, desperate, not only souls, but workers in the field. That's why I bless you in Jesus' name, that you would change, begin to change your mindset. Paul, everywhere he went, that's who he, was, who he was looking for. Yes, he went to the lecture halls. Yes, he went to the synagogues. He did that sometimes for two years, sometimes for two months, sometimes for two weeks. But this, his goal was clear. He was looking for the prepared worker. Always. And once he found the prepared worker, the Lydia, the Jason, the Priscilla, or Aquila, whenever he found them, that's when he went to the next place. He found the reason, he found the prepared worker, set up the system, he went to the next place. Okay, God uses those who also have the, those eyes too. Not everyone's going to be a worker. You shouldn't be discouraged. Actually, most people are not going to be. Most people are going to be like, oh, that's cool. Jesus is the Christ. All right, all right. Nice. You know, or they might have not any kind of you know, reaction, but they're, our, they're the ones that are prepared. 
that will hear the message and be like, man, where have you been? Why are you coming to me now? You know, who will put their conclusion. And they're, they're prepared people. They're prepared. A person who seeks after that is what Kung God uses. Um, five, the person who knows the biblical method. What is the biblical method? It's through Jesus. So if you look at Matthew 28, verse 16, if you read a few three verses before, it says that the eleven were there worshiping and still some doubted. So God's method is not man. I mean, if the eleven doubted, the eleven see Jesus crucified, they see him rise from the dead, they see him for 40 days, and they still doubt. And Jesus doesn't say, man, my method was you guys. Man, you guys were supposed to be the ones. I'm going to find some new disciples. That's not the method. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen? That, that's what he should have said, but he didn't say that. He didn't say, I can't believe you guys. After you see me die, after you see me rise, after you see me for 40 days, and you're still doubting, oh my gosh, I'm going to find new disciples. That's not what he says. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth is mine. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations. It says make disciples, but in other words, there's prepared disciples in the field. Just go. I'm going to be with you always to the end of the age. That is the method of God, that God is with you and he has all authority and power. Come follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Acts 1 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. It's not a command, it's a promise. That's God's method. Amen. You just align yourself to that. Continue to have faith in that. God will fulfill His promise. Secondly, the blessing that believers in Jesus receive, Matthew 16 through 17, this is very important. After Peter makes the confession, he says, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by heaven, but my Father in heaven, and upon this rock I will build my church. Okay, that's the blessing that you have. I will build my church. If you look, just, you know, don't take my word for it. Look at that passage. Uh, the blessing of the rock, the blessing to proclaim the gospel. If you lose hold of the blessing of evangelism, you lose hold of everything. There are so many places to share the gospel, but if you have interest in other things, your concerns are different from God's. Okay, And you're going to lose hold of that blessing. The greatest blessing, as we shared a couple weeks ago, too, is evangelism. If you're going to live your life as a Christian, you have nothing to do with evangelism, you are missing out because you cannot enjoy that blessing when you get to heaven. It's the only blessing that is made for here. When you get to heaven, you don't need evangelism. You can't enjoy evangelism. This is the only place you can do it. And God has chosen us to be his vessels and instruments for sharing the gospel. It's a blessing. Amen. 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 It's a blessing. It's the blessing. Next to salvation, it's everything. He gives us the blessing to overcome the gates of Hades, the blessing to overcome the authority of the world, hell, and the devil. Look at these verses when you get the chance, but don't, that blessing is yours. It's ours. This is what's happening in the background. Satan is working, but we have the name of Jesus, the authority to overcome that. So we have to utilize that. Be aware and utilize. The, the beginning of Satan leaving is acknowledging that he is working. Okay, it's step one. The blessing to receive the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The blessing to, of answer to prayer. Matthew 16, John 14, Acts 4. Jesus and the name of Jesus. Utilize the key. When? Every single day. Guys, just take the time tonight before you sleep. I've been trying. This is my one of my practical applications of leaving my phone at my desk. Because when it's in my bed, I'm on it. It's so easy to just go to YouTube and spend an hour plus drowning in YouTube. Um, there's times for that too, but whatever you can, or you know, I'm not saying you should do that or you have to do that, but try, make sure you have time to stop, relax, take a deep breath, utilize the key, the name of Jesus, hold on to the gospel, enjoy the gospel. Amen? And to do this more in concentration, um, to head up, pastor's meeting this morning and we're going to try to do another concentrated training like we did before um, right after the New Year's message so January 5th and 6th we're praying for that Friday, Saturday um, to have another concentrated training at the at the Sunday Mission Hall um, but to go over the New Year's message and go more 
um, specifically in how we're going to daily do the three todays and um, the life of the evangelist. Okay. Let's take a minute to pray. The long-standing problem, um, first discovering that the, what the long-standing problems are within us and holding on to the way, the answer of Christ, the gospel, the word, and overcoming that every single day. Uh, let's take a moment to pray. Uh, let's pray also for December 23rd and our staff meeting that will happen right after this. Let's just take a minute to, to pray together and then I'll pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for salvation. For saving us, not only saving us, but calling us as workers and disciples, Lord, who, um, who in whom you've given the heart of evangelism. Lord, it's not something that we've made on our own. Um, and we thank you for giving us that heart. And step by step, Father, we pray um, that you would uh, change our nature, that you would change our imprints roots, um, to, uh, to do more of only Christ, the more of the gospel, so that in the most natural way and in your perfect time schedule, um, we, may, we may stand as witnesses, not only in our fields, but Lord, uh, for this precious EM ministry that you've given to us. Uh, Father, we lift up the staff meeting, um, preparations for uh, December 23rd's um, Christmas camp. Uh, Lord, we lift up uh, Pastor Brett as he is um, now, Lord, the lead pastor of EM. Pray for um, wisdom for him and guidance, and Lord, just oneness. Um, as Satan hates that so much. Um, Lord, we just ask for your grace and mercy. Allow us to have complete oneness uh, for the sake of, Lord, uh, your glory, your kingdom, uh, for evangelism and our EM family. Um, give us grace, Lord, and strength so that the rest of this day, Lord, we can continue to go um, by your power uh, through um, the staff meeting and inventory as well. Uh, we thank you for this time and pray these things. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen.